Not so glorious day ladies and gentlemen, Toby here bringing you another video and as you can see I'm not feeling too well these days but you know, YouTube videos aren't going to make themselves. So today we have a full hammered in, I mean piled in, which is, you know, it's kind of the same thing. I mean, you can hear that shit in the background. Stop. Yeah, like I'd miss an opportunity to make such a reference. But anyway, this is actually going to be more than just a hammered in guide video. It's going to be a complete palled in guide video. Only the next day after finishing this entire video, spending 10 hours on editing it, uploading it, and rewatching it for the last time, did I realize that this is not a guide video. This is like an overview. So if you're looking for some in-depth information, your best bets is looking somewhere else that means I will include the Avenger, the Zealot and the Smiter as well. Therefore you may imagine we have quite a few things to go through and without a further ado, timestamps in the description and shall we get started. Alright, let's start it out with subclasses. Hammerdin, Zealot, Avenger and Smiter. All of them excel at different things, except for Hammerdin, because he just does it all. That's where you're wrong, actually. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, of course, Toby, you dumbass, Hammerdin can do Ebers. But nope, you're wrong again. That's not the only thing a Hammerdin can do. Clearly, you haven't seen my latest video. I ran some intellectual, statistically bulletproof tests on clear speed between Avenger, Zealot, and Hammerdin. And let me tell you this Avenger won. He totally whooped Hammerdin's ass in none other than the most breathtaking area in Diablo 2. Magathlayer. But anyway, getting back to the video, I'll go through each subclass in more depth and then round it out with a few more random topics. So for the first one we have Hammerdin Overview. When it comes to endgame, Hammerdin is not only the best subclass, it's also the best class. Not a single other class can even compare in clear speed on player's aid while maintaining his levels of survivability. That's it. It's a fact. However, what people seem to often miss, especially the softcore players, is how squishy he is without top gear. The biggest weakness a Hammerdin has is his range and close spaces. So if you're making a hardcore playthrough and you're in Hell Act 1 tower levels, you can get screwed easily. Sure, you might have high block, but you still need to get into melee range and there lie two options. One is run which results in your defense going to zero and all attacks hitting you except for the ones you block. And two is walking, which makes you slow as fuck and while you dodge a lot of attacks, it takes you so long to get to those archers that quite a few of those arrows will hit you by that time. That is assuming they won't run away from you, which they typically do. In other words, take a look at the other classes. Sorceress has such fast teleporting speed that most of the time monsters won't even get to attack her. Barbaran has a taunt and leap to take care of scary ranged monsters. Necromancer, Assassin, Druid and Amazon have meat shields to summon for scouting purposes. But Paladin? None of that. You can probably use Vigor Aura or Defiance while closing the gap, but let's be realistic. If you're playing a Hammered in, you're probably enjoying the face roll, so no way in hell you're doing that. You think it's a joke, no way you can die until you- <coughs> Yeah, that's my Paladin, dead while farming Countess, killed by archers. Now I may sound like Trump, but believe me, you can die with a Hammered in early on quite easily. In fact, I'd rate him as only 5th safest class to make a playthrough, on below Necromancer, below Assassin, below Barbarian and a Druid. Feel free to disagree in the comment section, I've done both players 1 and players 8 with each of the class while severely under -neared, so I'll be happy to back it up. But this is kind of getting off topic, let's go back to the Hammerdin building. First up we have stats and they go as per usual, like 2 points into strength because you probably have enigma, maybe 4 points into dexterity to hit 75% block and the rest into energy. Skills are equally as simple, max hammer and its synergies, concentration aura and put rest into holy shield. When you're like level 95 and have all those maxed out, Defiance or Resist Lightning for hidden bonus are your next best bets. 
for items there are a ton of options and honestly Hammerton's damage is so stupid that min-maxing is kind of worthless on him anyway. I would go as far as saying that you don't really care much about the breakpoints. Like the 75 versus 125 faster cast rate breakpoint might be the only one that matters and even then probably only when you're wearing Enigma. Personally I always go for 125 but it's mostly because I prefer it over extra damage. Again, your damage is stupid, like really really stupid, like one punch man stupid. As for the other breakpoints, concentration is uninterruptible so faster hit recovery loses its value. Faster block rate sounds pretty cool though, it's hard to notice a difference in practice. In theory it sounds pretty useful but there are very few viable items that actually provide you with it. And since I mentioned items, let's take a look at a potential few options. Now I'll be blunt with you, I think Hammerton is so stupid that I don't really care what I wear and I, I don't believe in properly gearing him. What you're seeing right now is my standard budget setup but overall I'd be surprised if there was actually any difference between like this perfected gear and just randomly okay looking setup that features a few of those GG items. So what I'll do instead is I'll just name a few items that I feel are often overlooked and if you want a precise 100% best possible build quick google will do you more good. Oh and before I mention those items please don't try to make a hodo in a scepter. I know it says mace but it just doesn't work. It has to be an actual mace not a mace class weapon. Too many people fucked up there, don't be one of them. So the first one is a weapon wizard spike. It helps out hitting 125 faster cast rate breakpoint massively and takes care of resistances. Sure it lacks damage but come on, like stupid stupid damage. This weapon is also closely tied to the armor I like using Garden Angel. It has zero faster cast rate so it's a nice combination of wizard spike. And the extra block rate, max resistances, it's just too sexy to pass up. Apart from these two items maybe a Lawbringer would be pretty cool for the always on Sanctuary aura but that's probably pretty meme. I guess Storm Shield is always worth mentioning for hardcore, again stupid stupid damage so all you care about on your gear is how to minimize as much as possible the potential death threat. And it is hard to hit 50% damage reduction cap without it. Hell, it's probably pretty impossible unless a double bearer crown of ages plus enigma and verdungo. Anyway, that's it for the Hammer Den, let's move on to Zealot. Now I have no idea why would anyone play this subclass but I guess some people find it enjoyable. It's not the fastest clearing class, it's not the best for budget paladin, it doesn't really excel at anything. But hey, if you're having fun, go at it. I mean some people enjoy watching other people stuff their face. Well this got weird real fast, I think we were talking about Zealot. Stat distribution is the exact same for Hammerden, strength for item, dexterity for block, rest into energy, skills is the same as well, max zeal and its synergies, the aura is fanaticism, max holy shield and defiance. Resist lightning is also an option I suppose, though probably not. Moving on to breakpoints, the main one over here is attack speed, you absolutely must hit it as high as possible. This is having in mind that zeal already increases your attack speed tremendously, but I've been underestimating the stats severely in the past, but it seems that the damage you get from your skills and multiplied by your attack speed is far greater than additional damage on items multiplied by lower attack speed. Now faster hit recovery, block rates are also useful though with a melee focused gear it will be much easier to come by than for a caster like Hammerden, take G-Face for example that alone has 30% faster hit recovery. 
As for the items, I will do the same as with the hammered in part, but for a different reason. I don't feel like an expert on this topic, so me giving out the best in slot item advice may end up misleading. There is a second reason as well. If you're playing Zealot, you're probably in it to have some fun, not min max, because then you'd just be playing hammered in. So if you're in for fun, just have fun. Now, as for the items that can be overlooked, it's only the weapons, honestly, that I can think of. Uh, first one is Demon Limb, used as a precast, instantly fixes all attack rating issues with that level 23 enchant. As for the actual weapons to hit monsters with, I have a full video comparing different weapons to each other if you want to check it out. I actually found out some fascinating shit like for example, if you're in it just for fun, just making a playthrough, don't give a shit about weapons and just pick whatever. Your clear speed, your progression speed to be more precise, mostly depends on the monster spawns anyway. But if you want to be a bit more precise, in a nutshell you have a few categories of weapons. First the godly ones, breath of the dying, grief, then you have amazing but still somewhat cheap ones like oath, probably death, and then the rest are about the same. Even something as a double up butcher's pupil is pretty damn good. Except for flesh ripper, that shit sucks balls. Oh, and, and lawbringer, yeah that shit is dope. I won't go into details why, just watch that comparison video. Which brings me to the next part of this video, Avenger. Now I know the truly endgame GG Avenger with Dual Dream can actually wreck stuff, but I've never played it personally as I never had that kind of free time wealth to trade for those multiple Jaroons required. So if you're as broke as me in both Diablo and in real life, Avenger is pretty damn useless. Except for Maggot Lair, there he is king. But yeah, everywhere else he's just a worse version of Zealot, which in turn is a worse version of Hammered In. You may believe me or not, but I've already mentioned that I did that Zealot weapon comparison video, as well as I did a similar one with Avenger. And literally with all weapons except one, Zealot cleared faster than Avenger. On average, it took Avenger 30% more time to clear. I also did a few runs with Hammered In just for the fuck of it. I made him as budget as possible, zero skillers, no enigmas or anything, no SOJs, no Arachnid Mesh, no Zachroom Shield, truly budget. And he still was a full minute faster than a Zealot equipped with Ethereal Berserker Axe Breath of the Dying. A minute may not seem like a lot, but when the entire run is 2-3 to three minutes, uh, that's quite a bit. So yeah, let me repeat that. Avenger is a worse version of Zealot, which in turn is a worse version of a Hammered In. Now if you do feel like a masochistic, you enjoy 50 shades of grey and end up rolling an Avenger, I guess I won't judge. Like I said, people enjoy watching weird shit, like streamers who have most of their screen taken by their boobs rather than the gameplay, so yeah, puts things into perspective. And who cares about somebody playing a video game wrong? <laughs> So yeah, if you do end up rolling an adventure, the stats are the same uh, as with the other two subclasses, strength for items, dexterity for block, and energy for karma points. Skill points go into vengeance and its synergies while leaving enough to get conviction to level 25, which I think results in minus 120 resistances before battle orders, at which point no more points into it will have any effect. Lastly, Holy Shield must be maxed out before synergies, you'll be taking a lot of damage, so take care of Holy Shield before finishing up with the extra damage. The breakpoints you really want to focus on is attack speed, it's head and shoulders above any other in importance, it's even more crucial than for Zealot because you don't have any build in your skill. If you take a look at the results I got from the Avenger weapon testing video, it's clear to see that out of all the weapons, the fastest hitting ones perform best. Not the heavy physical damage hitters like Stone Crusher, not the heavy elemental damage hitters like Gimmer Shred, nope, only the attack speed ones. And Lawbringer. Never forget Lawbringer. It's the dopest shit in Diablo 2. 
So yeah, attack speed is crucial, ditch everything for it, probably. Other than that, same as with Zealot, faster hit recovery and faster block rate are nice. As for the items, I can't really come up with anything underrated, but it might be due to my lack of Avenger knowledge. I'd also love to do a section on a truly GG Avenger with those dual dreams and such, but I've never personally played it, so unfortunately I can't. I know a lot of you are as broken Diablo 2 as I am, so you'll probably understand. As for the last subclass, we have Smiter, its only purpose is Ubers, but even there it doesn't exactly matter. During my previous stream I was doing Ubers and towards the end of the stream somebody in the chat suggested doing my players 8 Ubers. You know, for the fuck of it, cause I'm playing hardcore probably. So I sort of did that, I killed the Lilith, Duriel and Isuel and then switched to players 8 for the Uber Tristram. But there I took it a step further. I respect into a Z lot and went in on players 8 with 1 point into smite. And I killed Uber Tristram just fine. So at this point I'm not exactly sure what's the purpose of a smiter. It's like a Z lot but hits slightly harder or something. I don't know, well, what's the point of reviewing this class? I guess this ties nicely to how to do Ubers as a paladin, but really all you need to know is if you're playing hardcore probably put on Marowax for the lifetap cast. That or get exile for a reliable source of lifetap. Because you're not a barbarian, you won't have 5000 health and if the lifetap wears off, you might be dead. <coughs> oh yeah, that's how another of my paladins died. Though maybe it was being one shot by Uber Mephisto. It's been a while, I, I don't remember at this point, and to be honest I deleted the recording because I was too embarrassed. Little did I know then that I'd fuck up so many times on stream that that little death wouldn't even matter. Anyhow, the last section of this video is dedicated for the slaves, the loyal meat shields. For softcore it's easy, act to my aura, always. You're tanky enough as you are, so why bother with Holy Freeze? For Hardcore I can see two options, first is of course Act 2 Holy Freeze with Reaper's Soul, and for the second one I considered an Act 5 Lawbringer Meatball, but it felt pretty inconvenient. I tried with a Hammered in both with and without Enigma, and in both cases it was just meh, hard to reposition Mercenary the way you'd like, and probably even more importantly the main issue was how it interacted with charge. Since when I play I barely ever walk as a paladin, I always either teleport or keep charging. And when the monsters keep getting pushed back I would constantly run into them or something. So yeah, for hardcore I'd probably suggest sticking with just Act 2 Holy Freeze with a Reaper Soul. Now for the actual, actual last part of this video there are a few of random notes I'd like to make regarding paladins in general. I guess somewhat of a mini tips and tricks section. The first one is if you're charging keep those charges short. You don't want to run head into a pack of monsters and die. You know, something like Act 5, those friendly minotaurs and steroids, they'll just whack you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how another of my paladins died, charged into those guys. Paladin is actually the class I've died with the most. So yeah, try to keep those charges at most like half a screen wide, probably even a third. As for the other tip, it's a hidden effect that a resist lightning, cold and fire skills have for every two hard points you put into them. Not soft points from items, but hard points. For every two of them, you passively get plus one to maximum respective resistance. So if you have 75 to all resistances and put two points into resist lightning, you'll get it up to 76. This coupled with Guardian Angel can result in 95 all resistances. Is it worth it? Probably not, but bulking up slightly on your lightning resistances, which is the most dangerous element, makes some sense. Especially if your defense is already so high that it gets hit by diminishing returns too hard. And with that said, this is it for this video. Hope you find this video at least a bit useful in your Diablo 2 while you wait for Diablo 4 journey. 
and if you did I would typically ask for a subscribe and say it would be much appreciated but in all honesty I may be quitting making Diablo 2 content in a week or two and moving on to other games though probably still Blizzard or Diablo related. So yeah, at this point I'm not sure if you should. Regardless of it, as always folks, I thank you for watching, um, hope you all have a lovely day and see you guys in the comment section. Cheers! Hey, this sounds just like you smashing that subscribe button after seeing this video.